I was recently asked to take a look at Rivian and render an opinion on what I think about the stock. So let's do it. Well, at first glance, click in the daily chart. I'm going to say that Rivian is probably a short right here. You have negative earnings. Oh, so that's interesting. I don't typically trade off of earnings, but they are negative, so there's that. You have this huge rally here where it followed the rest of, of the market. And then all through August, we sold off, failed to make a new high. This is on the daily chart. Let's zoom it out and take a look at a weekly. On a weekly, let's just put some trend lines in because that is always a good way to start. Almost always. So Rivian is in a concerted downtrend and there's no question about that. Let's connect the lower part of the trend. It's a trending channel down. It is currently below its point of control on the weekly chart. Let's go back to a daily. It is slightly above the point of control on the daily chart, but it also depends on how much time you pull in. So the more time you pull in, the worse it looks. One of the challenges with trading in a channel is you kind of don't want to fish in the middle of the pond. You try to got to get out to the edges to cast your line in. And so this would have been a good buy. This would have been a good sell. At this point, we're about in the middle of the channel. But if you were to short it right here, let's say, with a stop loss right there, you have a pretty good risk reward ratio to get back down in here into support. Now, now what? Let's see if there's anything going on in Rivian that's even worth getting excited about. Well, Rivian does not pay dividends. What a shock. What a shock that a company that loses money wouldn't pay dividends. <sighs> okay, is there any hope? Net income, minus five billion. So that is billion with a B. So this is a company that is solidly losing money. So that's, that's good. Earnings, earnings are garbage. Financial position, here we go. Let's, what do we got going on here? Uh, its liabilities outweigh its assets by a good solid three quarters of a billion dollars. So that's, that's not bad. That's not bad if you're looking to, looking for a tax write-off. See what we got here. Uh, year over year revenue. Well, they do have positive revenue growth. That's pretty exciting. They also have a cost of goods that exceeds their revenue by $1 billion. So that's not too good. Their gross profit, which is actually a gross loss, is all over the map, but they're only losing $1.8 billion. So that's something to get excited about, I guess. Their operating income is negative one and a half billion on average per quarter. Trailing 12 months, they've lost five billion. So well, that's pretty interesting. When can we figure out when this company is gonna go out of business? Well, so that's the exciting part. Here's how you do that. You take their cash on hand and you subtract out their net operating loss. And then when you do that division, it'll tell you how many quarters they had left before they are out of business. Total debt, six billion. They're claiming that their book value is $6 a share. Find that hard to believe. Total liabilities and shareholder equity. Somehow that's a positive number for a company that's never turned a profit and has more debt than equity. Let's see. 
how the hell are they claiming? I'm a little puzzled by that. Cash flow. How do what do we got going on cash flow? Cash flow from operating activities. Trailing 12 months, they've only lost 4 billion if you believe these numbers. Cash from investing activities. There they've lost 2 billion. Cash from financing activities. They brought in 2 and a half billion. And their free cash flow is only minus 5 billion. I think Warren Buffett likes companies that have negative free cash flow. I wouldn't be surprised if he's their larger and largest investor. Okay, setting all of that nonsense aside, what do we got going on on their revenues? Their revenues are growing, so that's pretty exciting, I guess. In fact, the growth of their revenues is only exceeded by the growth of their losses. Earnings. Only losing 93 cents a share. That's pretty exciting, I guess. So, yeah, this looks like a company that's headed for bankruptcy. Wow, 16,000 employees. Basic earnings per share, minus $6. I'll tell you what's amazing about this stock. It's amazing that it's trading for $13.08 still. It has a huge free float, $726 million in free float. I wonder what the short interest is on this thing. Uh, can I find short interest? Let's see. Price to sales ratio. It's trading two and a half times its sales, which is interesting considering they lose money on every sale. Price to book ratio. It's only trading roughly twice its book value which is weird because they're claiming their book value is higher than it is, so I don't know what that's all about. An enterprise value. Some, some <laughs> Somehow a company that's never turned a profit and is riddled in debt is uh, worth 11 billion. Let's see, in whose wet dream that's even possible? Well, okay, right? Enterprise value, 11 billion. That must mean they that must mean they have twenty billion in cash on hand. Return on assets minus thirty five. Return on ex equity minus sixty two. Return on invested capital minus forty two. Why would anyone even be, will be looking at this pile of crap company? Net margins. Oh, their net margins only minus one twenty five. Uh, that means they lose, if I'm doing the math right, I'm a little rusty here, but that means that every vehicle they sell, uh, they they lose one and a quarter times the value of the vehicle, I think. Okay, so they got a solvency ratio down here. Solvency ratio. By the way, I don't trade on fundamentals anyway. Typically what ends up happening is if you follow the market leaders, okay, they're going to have solid financials because stocks typically don't keep going up unless they have solid financials. So I don't put a lot of stock into that. Here, here's what I can tell you about Rivian. I didn't even have to look at this to know that this company's headed for bankruptcy. If you just look at the price chart, the price chart is locked in a death spiral, you know, more or less down. And... So, I mean, what else do you need to do? I mean, let's pull up a weekly chart again, right? Now, I understand Tesla had some issues for a while when it first came out, and it took it a while for Tesla to become, you know, profitable. I get that. Okay, so maybe there's going to be a turnaround here. But probably not when you consider that the electric vehicle market is not getting larger. It's actually getting smaller. The electric vehicles have a very limited use case, so where's the market going to come from? I mean, even if the government would force people to buy them, they won't. People are resisting electric vehicles everywhere. Electric vehicles are useful if you live in a city, if you never plan on traveling more than 100 miles away from your home. Other than that, they're basically useless. And then when you take into consideration that what they're telling us about global warming being caused by human activity is all a bunch of scientific baloney anyway and nobody's going to believe it there's almost no case at all for any more electric car companies you know other than tesla 
I mean, he pretty much covers everything that you need. The market's just not there. In fact, most of the people I know, it would be a cold day in hell before they would even consider buying an electric vehicle. And if I were to buy one, it would probably be a Tesla. Okay, here we go, right? Solid downtrend, broke sideways. There's a big low, followed by a sucker's rally, fell back in, made another big low, made an attempt, couldn't even get above. It's not looking good for, for Rivian. But I know hope springs eternal, you know? Let's see what we going on here. This is nice. This is, this is really interesting. You should jump right in and, and buy this stock. Rivian Automotive Inc. has formed a $5 billion joint venture with Volkswagen to create software for upcoming vehicles, focusing on boosting production of its R2 SUV set to launch in early 2026. So that's, that's pretty exciting news, right? I wonder how much money they're going to lose on each one of those that they sell. Oh, Cantor Fitzgerald is holding a price target of Rivian of $19 a share. Well, let's see. At $19 a share would put it pretty much at the top of the channel that, that we drew here. And so if you were lucky enough to achieve $19 a share again, you should probably get out of this thing because there's so much overhead selling pressure uh, around 22, 23 that you're not likely to get through $19. In fact, I would be shocked if, if we, we even see $19 a share on this thing again unless there's massive manipulation. Uh, I'm guessing we're going to see... Yeah, you'll probably see 10 before you'll see 19 and likely you'll see bankruptcy before they get that vehicle out. I just don't see what the attraction is for people to own companies that make no money. Okay, well, let's let's think about it this way, okay? Think about it like this. Let's say your cousin Eddie comes and he says, I got this great idea and I want you to loan me money out of your retirement for this great idea, okay? And then he tells you whatever the idea is. And let's even say like you're somewhat excited about the idea. But then he says, every customer we acquire, we're going to lose 125% of the money that we earn off the customer. We're going to lose that. So if you take in $100, you're actually going to lose $225 on the deal. And then he says, okay, that if you give me $500,000, I'm going to run up twice that in debt and then sell a lot of stock to dilute you. Would you, as a prudent investor, loan that money to your brother-in-law or your cousin Eddie? I'm guessing not. And therefore, you should not be buying stock from perfect strangers who are losing money on their product in a market that's totally limited and probably had no hope to be successful anyway. Does that make sense? Uh, is that crazy? I mean, I, I don't know. Seems, seems like it makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. What do you think? Am I out of my mind? Are you going to laugh in my face when Rivian turns it around and uh, it goes up to seven million dollars a share let's see where where did it start trading traded at 121 and it has been solidly selling off ever since so there you go how do they have green quarters here how's that even possible oh they had some earnings surprises hmm they had an earnings surprise where they didn't quite lose as much money as they thought they were gonna lose honestly i don't get it why do you people buy why do people buy this dog shit? <laughs> oh, well, when you consider that 30% of the S&P 500 loses money, you know, and are basically zombie companies, I guess buying a little Rivian ain't so bad. This painless trader with Stock Strategy Circle with a Rivian update. Remember, there's risk of loss in trading stocks, especially when the company loses money hand over fist. How do I turn this shit off?